Hi, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and I'm here to share with you my second set of alternate project ideas that I created with the February 2024 Sweet Springtime Paper Pumpkin Kit from Stampin' Up. These are the supplies that came in this month's kit. When you assemble the projects as shown, you create nine items. Three standard size cards, three slimline cards, and three milk carton treat boxes. The steps for creating those items can be found within the direction sheet or by following the steps in the how-to video. That link, along with other kit details and creative inspiration, can be found on the back of that included pamphlet. I invite you to watch what I share today though because I love to think outside the box and manipulate the parts and pieces in these kits to make lots of other paper crafting projects. The kits are a Stampin' Up! product so the colors, images, and supplies always coordinate with many other Stampin' Up! products. All those tools and supplies that I'll be using are listed below and linked to my online store. You can also find links for learning more about paper pumpkin kits, starting your subscription through me, through me so you can access my exclusive ideas and possibly receive gifts and prizes, joining my paper pumpkin fan club where others are sharing their alternate project ideas, and if you're watching my video on YouTube, a link to my website to see photos of the projects that I'll be sharing today. For ease in demonstrating, I'll be substituting the clear block that came with my first paper pumpkin kit for Stampin' Up's ergonomic blocks. I'll also be using the larger version of the ink pad and some additional adhesive, such as my Stampin' Seal. By the way, if you're looking for ideas for past kits, visit my website at stampyourartout.com. Click on Paper Pumpkin in the top menu, then choose Recent or Older Posts. I've been creating and sharing alternates with every kit since March of 2013 when Paper Pumpkin first began. I'm excited to create, so let's begin. A lot of you may wonder why I always mention the Paper Pumpkin Fan Club on Facebook. Well, this was a group that I started back in May of 2015, and it's grown to over 35,000 members. It's a huge group, and we have very strict rules, which is why people love being there, because we stay positive and we share lots of different alternate ideas with the kit. I hope that if you're watching and you get kits, that you become a part of that group, because it is a great place to share and get ideas. And um, one of the questions, because I am an admin of it is uh, that came through is that um, they wanted to know what East what bunnies have to do with Easter and I think that the person I didn't approve the post because it would have created a debate and stuff but I think what the person was trying to say was um, I wish Stampin' Up! would have created something more religious, right? Uh, now, bunnies do signify new life. It, they symbolize new life, and so that is why bunnies eventually were associated with Easter. Um, but you, you'll notice that this stamp set is not just about Happy Easter, but it has a welcome baby, a springtime greeting, and Stampin' Up! has to say, stay secular about um, a lot of their things. I mean, they do offer stamp sets that are... Christian base and Jewish based and stuff like that. So you can find that diversity in there. But on that note, I thought I would appease those of you who wanted to make something um, Christian based. And so this card is a happy Easter card that we're gonna put together. Um, the purple cloth in Christianity signifies royalty and it's often put out, uh, swept across the cross during Easter time. And so we're gonna use the purple banner as a purple cloth on the cross. We're going to start with our crumb cake, uh, eight and a half by 11 cardstock. I'm cutting it in half at five and a half inches. And now I'm going to score it using the light blade at four and a quarter inches. We're going to fold that in half. We'll use our bone folder to help crease it. And now we need some outside and inside layers, as you can see. So I'm going to bring in some basic white cardstock. Now, if you're a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, you don't have to invest in a lot of different supplies and tools, but this video will show a few more than I normally do because um, I'm going to use the Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine and I'm using multiple colors, colors of cardstock. Um, we're going to go a little beyond if that's okay with you. Hopefully this inspires your creativity though. So we're going to use two layers of white that are four inches by five and a quarter and they will be outside and inside the card and then you can see here 
And then I've got some early espresso. Now you could use any brown here. Um, I, I would say it should be different than the crumb cake color if you're gonna use that for your base because then it will stand out. And I think contrast is always good visually on art. So we're gonna go ahead and use early espresso and you can see there's a slight texture to it. We're going to emboss it. But I figured since we were bringing in the Love of Spring dyes anyways that is made to coordinate with this kit, we might as well bring in an embossing folder this time. So let's take our Stampin' Cotton emboss machine and we're gonna be using the embossing folder called Timber and it's a, a 3D embossing folder so it's a little more deeply etched when you emboss. We'll grab our, oh we need our gray plate. Let me go grab that. If you decide to invest in the Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine, you will not regret it, by the way. It's, um, it's a pricier tool, but it's well worth it because you can emboss and you can die cut. And it's, uh, it just brings so much more life to your paper crafting product projects. So, and it does come with the platform, which is platform um, number one. And then you get two cutting plates, a die adapter plate number two, and you also get this plate, which is the gray one, and it works with our 3D embossing folders. So with our 3D embossing folders, you take and you put your cardstock in there, and I'm gonna put my cardstock in there so it goes with the grain of the wood, like that. And then we put our embossing folder in seam first and sandwich it between our cutting, our, our platform, sorry, our cut, our platform and the gray plate. And then you just take and you crank on this handle here. And the nice thing about this machine is you can use it left-handed if you crank on this side or right-handed. So it works with either or, and I appreciate that because I have um, a child who is left-handed. So now that we pull this out and open it up, you can see the lovely texture that you can get on your papers from embossing folders. I cut those a little bit longer than I needed to have them so that we can trim with the scissors and we can make them more exact. So let's bring in our pieces now. We've got our card base, we've got our banner, and it looks like we're missing just some green card stock. So we're gonna be using Garden Green and we'll use that along with a stamp set and punch combination that you will not regret owning if you're going to be doing um, alternates with the uh, paper pumpkin kits or uh, even like our kits collection kits. This is one of the stamp sets that is in the current um, collection. It's in the annual catalog, but you can also find it online. It's called Layering Leaves. I helped to create this stamp set, design the stamp set, because it's my uh, Million Achiever stamp set. And I designed it so that it would go hand in hand with alternates. You can put leaves with so much, so many things like coffee cups and sports and, you know, anything really. Leaves can just be that accent image for lots of different things. Plus you have all of these different sentiments and the sentiments can enhance the sentiments that you have in your kit. So if you don't want to have an Easter, spring or baby card, you could have a happy to celebrate you birthday card, right? So we're going to use this leaf image, the one that's more solid. This is the punch. It's called the bow punch and it helps to punch out our images. So we'll stamp that garden green on garden green cardstock. Because we're using um, photopolymer stamps and I often forget to do this, the stamp and pierce mat is a great tool to have with these clear stamps. Um, it gives that cushion that clear or cling mount stamps have uh, between rubber. Oops, I didn't stamp that very, very well because I stamped it too close to my punched image. But it gives that cushion that you'll find in cling stamps, the red rubber stamps. Um, it, it makes the image feel more even as it's stamping down. It gives it a more even look and um, it takes away any imperfections that you might have on your tabletop. So we're going to punch that twice and I like to punch this image in thin strips at least one and a quarter inches in height will give you plenty of room and that way when you punch out you don't have to punch out pieces of your cardstock that you don't need and then on this purple banner we're going to stamp in a different color we'll stamp in the color that comes in the kit early espresso and we'll stamp our happy Easter across this wide part, or I'm sorry, this longer part of the purple banner. 
And the last extra tools that I recommend that you have will be some additional inks. <laughs> Daffodil Delight with a blending brush gives an amazing sunrise appearance. So we're gonna take and add some um, Daffodil Delight ink and I'm starting right in the middle bottom and I'm swirling my brush around and around and around very softly to get that haze of yellow. I want a little bit deeper. You can see this is much brighter, so we're gonna do that again. We're just picking up the ink from the stamp pad and going directly to the paper in the spot that's gonna get covered up. So the base of the cross is going to get covered, so I know I'm safe to go ahead and start my ink right there. Now, if I didn't want to have my ink forming directly onto my card, I could do that removal of some of it onto my grid paper first and then come back to my card. But I'm okay with intensity since we're gonna go ahead and cover right up in the middle. And if we lay this across here, that looks beautiful. On the inside of the card, however, we have a softer little, oops, little pool of yellow here. So now I'm gonna take and remove some of that color from, oops, from my blending brush onto my grid paper first to lighten it. And as I come down, I won't have that harsh middle area. It'll be nice and soft all the way around. And make sure that you don't have other layers, especially if they're uneven underneath, or you could have a, um, a little uh, textured line going through. Okay, so we've got a nice hazy glow there on the inside layer. Let's add that to the inside of the card. Here on that layering leaf stamp, stamp set, you could put on there that stamp that says for you, um, ha happy Easter for you or thinking of you. Now we're gonna create with this first before we add it because again, remember these strips are nice and long. I'm gonna add this one first. And I'm gonna use my grid paper to find the middle point. So on my grid paper, which I have on the inch side, um, I have my inches going across here, zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three. And I can lay it up here and I can show, I can show you here that it is exactly four inches wide. If I bring this down a bit so we can have it more centered in the camera. Now let's start with this strip. Now this strip is not exactly um, like an inch or an inch and a half. It's an inch and five eighths. <laughs> so when we bring this onto our card, we wanna make sure that we have about the same amount on each side of the middle and the grid lines just help. So I've got about a 16th of an inch, of an inch away from each of those lines as I add it to my card. Flip it over, use your paper snips or scissors, trim off the excess, and now you have an exact um, match if you trim it after. Let's do the addition of this piece next. Now you'll notice I'm one of those people that doesn't glue exactly to the edges. And I do that on purpose because sometimes I have to pick up something and rearrange it. But I also put on enough adhesive where it's going to hold. Um, at this point, I think I want to just kind of estimate about the same distance down. And I'm going to go about an inch and a quarter down from that one line there. And again, it doesn't have to be exact, but as long as you've got your layer on here nice and square, everything's lined up, then you can use that to help put on things nice and straight. And it's at this point where the tucking really comes in handy. So if I had this adhesive all the way up to the edge of this, I wouldn't be able to tuck this part of the, the banner under there and get it nice and firm inside. Um, this is going to be added next, but we're going to be careful not to take off the backing on the dimensionals because we're going to put, I think I put on, yeah, I have two dimensionals, two dimensionals under there. So we're going to take and grab those now. And they are right up against the end of the banner. And then we're going to use our adhesive here, our seal adhesive or the blue dots that come in your kit. And we're going to tuck and we're going to add that in as high up as we can next to the cross. Okay, now I'm not pressing down nice and hard because I also have to tuck these leaves. So these leaves are going to come in next 
and I can see that if I want my leaf to go like that, that I probably want to trim the end off a bit. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to add some adhesive. And I want my leaf to kind of pop off the page towards the end. So I'm going to use the edges. Actually, we'll just cut a dimensional in half. We'll use half dimensionals on the ends here to pop those leaves up a bit. I'm going to even cut this further in half. Or you may even want to invest in our mini dimensionals. We have tinier dimensionals that you can use. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'll just do it there. And then we'll put um, some, I think we'll go and grab our multi-purpose liquid glue, which I've got in this precision tip bottle. And we'll add a bit of glue here and here. We'll take off the backings or the release paper from the back of the dimensionals. And again, we haven't stuck this part down yet. So we're going to lift this. We're going to position it and tuck and add that in like that. Okay, next we'll take and do the same thing with this one where we want to tuck it first just to see where it's going to land. And I think I want to, I'm just going to get rid of this anyways, even if it's not going to be seen. And I'm going to add a dimensional piece underneath this end one. And I think that's all I had on my original. So let's add some glue to this area, this area, and this area. Pull off the backing, position, and tuck. And now we can go in, oops, it's not all the way down, hang on, got to press it. <laughs> now we can come in and we can grab the release paper off of the back side of those two dimensionals and pop those down. I wonder if I did that on these. I did. I just didn't get glue under the, you know what, I'm going to do that now on my originals because I was able to easily bring this off the card and I guess I didn't like that. I want that to be more secure. So there. Now we have those leaves in place and they're going to hold down this banner a bit more. Now we can add this to the front of our card and I think I added it, I did, with dimensionals in each corner to give some shadow and it gives it just a little bit more, right, when you have that shadow. So we have a beautiful Happy Easter card for those of you that want a Christian based card. Yay! Okay, now we're going to move on to a baby card and this baby card was inspired by a card that I received from my friend Lisa Marshall. She's also in my team. Um, I kind of have it pulled apart, <laughs> so hang on. Um, it's like this, and then she had um, holes in the middle. We're not going to do that. We're going to do a, a belly band across the whole thing, but she had it tied in the middle and held shut. But if you look at this, when you open it up, it's just from one sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. Um, and it's cut into a square and then sectioned off and folded so creatively. She said she got that idea from my other friend, Debbie Henderson. So let's go ahead and create this fun fold and create a baby card. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna cut our base to eight inches by eight inches. And I'm using the measurement on the arm of my trimmer rather than cutting off a half inch using the measurements on this side. Sometimes our cardstock is not exactly eight and a half by 11 and we wanna get an exact eight by eight piece. That's why we're using this measurement over here. Set those pieces aside. Now we're gonna do some scoring. And again, using the measurements on this side, we're gonna score and we're gonna score as exact as we can. We're using the two inch line now. And you want to measure two inches on every four, uh, all the four edges, okay? okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to bring this into four inches. And we're going to put some extra score lines going through the middles of the middle sections, the middle outer sections. So the, we're going to ignore the inside, the inside square here. So we're going to score up to that score line. Then we're going to lift our arm of our trimmer, bring it back down where this score line is and press outward. So now we've created that look. 
score line, score line. We're going to rotate it and do the same thing in the other direction. Bring it to exactly the four inch line, four inch mark, score, lift, and score again. Now we're going to go back to these two inch marks and we're going to come in with our cutting blade. We're going to cut and we're making sure everything's lined up again. We're going to cut to that first score line, lift, bring the uh, blade back down on the second score line and cut out. So the only part that is connected is this section here. Let's rotate and let's do that again. Bring it right to that two inch mark. Take our cutting blade and score, I'm sorry, cut up to that first line, lift it, bring it back down on the second score line and cut all the way up and out. And what's going to happen here is this corner is going to be removed. We're going to rotate and do that again. Bring it to the two inch mark. Cut up to the first line, lift, bring it to the second line, and cut. And then our next side at the two inch mark. Cut to the first line, lift, start at the second line, cut out. And now we have our design that we need here for the base of our card. We're going to flip that over and we're going to carefully do some folding and creasing. So we're going to fold inward. And I'm making sure all my sides on the outside are lined up so that these corners match up perfectly. Now we'll flip it this way and we'll do some folding in this direction. And this is where you can get off slightly. You want to make sure that you're not. And these are going to be really tight to each other if you did everything correctly. You might even have to push and force your folds so that they all meet. All the corners are going to meet right in the middle. So this is probably the toughest part, but you can manipulate those score lines when you are first putting it together. And that's what it looks like for the base. Now let's go ahead and prepare our parts. This is a four by four square in the middle. We're going to grab the card base that comes from the kit with the bunnies and we're going to cut a piece that is three and three quarter inches and then we're going to cut in, uh, we're going to cut actually a little bit off the bottom here. I think I'm cutting a quarter of an inch off the bottom. Yes, a quarter of an inch off the bottom just to make this image tighter and we're going to cut in this direction at three and three quarter in, uh, inches. So now we have uh, the bunnies that are all perfectly centered in that square. We need that piece for our card. Now we're going to work on an envelope and we're going to open up the envelope on the two sides by just covering up this edge of the envelope over the top of the dark channel of our trimmer to remove about a quarter of an inch on each side. That will open up our envelope so we have some usable paper in here. This one we're going to keep white. We're going to trim right next to that score line to separate these two pieces and I probably could have had a sharper blade. When you have a sharp blade, it does not uh, get caught up on score lines. I might have to change my blade out. <laughs> All right, now we're going to rotate in this direction and we want to go to, yes, three and three quarter inches, uh, or three and three eighths, sorry. And I'm going to go a little beyond because I do have some room. You can see here, I'm going to go beyond. And that way we can get rid of this ragged edge here. Let's go back to three and three eighths on this side. And let's cut. And I'm going to come from that direction in case my blade's sharper in the other way. <laughs> All right, so now we have nice smooth sides. And we have a piece that's three and three eighths inches in this direction. Let's trim off one of the ends. And if we can, let's get a four 
and a quarter inch piece out of this. And we're going to score that at three and a half inches. And we're going to fold this back. And this is going to attach to this piece. Now let's grab, and I'm just going to cut a little fraction off here. Again, going with my blade in the other direction, because I think it's sharper in that direction right now. In fact, let's just take and turn that blade around. So when your blade gets sharp uh, or dull in one direction, you can take and pull it out and stick it back in the other way. I tend to push when I cut, so now my blade is sharper in that direction. Okay, um, at this point we're going to do some square cutting. So I want my sides to be as tall as possible and I actually don't want any of this adhesive on there you can see the envelope adhesive but we won't worry about that um, we're going to make sure that we have one and a qu uh, one and three quarters plus one and three quarters plus one and three quarters so we need a our, we need our envelope piece to be at least five and a quarter inches tall which we have so we could go ahead and just trim that part off Okay, now we can go ahead and do some straight cuts here. All right, so we have a squared off corner um, on all three sides here, and we're gonna bring this to one and three quarter inches. Then we're gonna bring the next one to one and three quarter inches. And I'm gonna ignore this because I don't think, oh yeah, we will need it. We're gonna do one more that's one and three quarter inches and look at that, we barely had it. Okay, it was perfect. Eek. Okay, so now we have another piece that's one and three quarter inches. Now from these two, cause they reach that whole length, those are the ones that I'll probably grab from first. Let me show you how I went about thinking of how these squares would go on. I closed up my whole card like that and I added squares that were in alignment with each other Okay, so the, the lines flowed. So with these two pieces here, and I do have a little bit of a bump on two of them, we're gonna use that bump in this part of the design. The reason why is because on these four pieces, the gray ones, we want them to be smooth because they would definitely show off a fold or a crease, but the gingham pattern is not going to. So we're gonna take the ones that have, here it is, that fold from the envelope flap, okay? There's the bump. And these two are gonna get cut into one and three quarter inch squares. And remember, they lined up together, right? Yes. So this one will go next to this one. It's like a puzzle piece. And then we'll do the same thing again where we'll do another one and three quarter and a one and three quarter and we've kept them all in alignment do you see that they work like one big puzzle okay now we can add them and i think i'm going to rotate and add them this way oh i'm not sure we'll decide when we pull it out let's put these off to the side then we need four more squares and we need them to be on the gray side so that's where this strip came in so we want to do a couple more and we can just because this is thin paper we can cut them together at the same time and we'll do and I've got a little ragged edge here we'll do one and three quarter again And these are for the inside, so we'll have the gray coloring up. I've closed up my card and I'm now adding the gingham squares to the front panels so that they're all, again, in that alignment that I had. We'll open this up. We're gonna go ahead and add this piece in here. We wanna first attach this little tab to the top back side of our bunnies so that'll get added right here to the top so it's lined up in the middle between the two edges and it's lined up with this edge up here and you can see there's a nice little 
even border all the way around. This is now going to get added to the inside of our card. So it's centered. And that'll dictate where we have all of our other layers going on the inside. So the two side layers here can just be the gray, but we're going to do something with the two, the top and the bottom ones before we add those gray pieces. For one of them, we're going to stamp Welcome Baby at the top. So I've got that image mounted onto my block. I've got my Early Espresso ink pad. I'm going to stamp it pretty close to the top because we want to have room for some greenery. Now we'll bring our stamp and cut and emboss machine out and the Love of Spring dies. The Love of Spring dies is a collection of dies that Paper Pumpkin subscribers can purchase. These dies coordinate with the January, February, and March kits and refill kits. And we're going to use the daffodil and we're going to use this leaf. And I've got my platform and, and plates lined up. One, two, three. I'll grab a green scrap and we'll die cut one daffodil from that and another green scrap for that die. We'll lay our other cutting mat on top, make sure everything's aligned and centered, and crank it through. And now we'll take and remove the Daffodil Delight, the yellow flower, from our die cut piece. We'll use our multi-purpose liquid glue to add it to the top of our green flower. So we have a two-tone flower. And then we'll add this whole piece to one of our squares, our blank square. And then this piece will get added to the Welcome Baby. I actually messed up and used the wrong die. <laughs> You're going to see in just a second here. I meant to use my daffodil with green once again, but that's okay. Those two still look great. This is what the original card had, was a stem that made it look like it was grass. I think I might like that better. All right, we'll add those to the inside. And this is why it was good that we added our bunnies already because we wanted our direction to be planned out. We wanted to know what the up and what the down was since this card is kind of the same all the way around until you added something like that. So at this point we can fold everything in. I'm just gonna place my glue bottle on top. And now we wanna work on the belly band. We had this piece left over from our white cardstock. It's eight and a half inches long. We're gonna cut it to one inch in this direction. We're gonna give it a little bit of a score at the two, let's see, two and an eighth, I'm sorry, two and a quarter. Let me think here. Four plus four is eight. Yes, two and a quarter inches. So we're gonna score it there and bend that back. And then we're gonna bring our card back in, wrap this, and I always do my belly bands on the cards because every card can be slightly different by a fraction of an inch, and we want to make sure that it wraps so it's nice and snug, but it's not too tight. So I think that looks pretty good. We're going to connect these two pieces together now. On this belly band, I connected it um, in the front so we could switch that around or you can have your connection in the back. I think I might switch it around. So we'll slide it off and I slide it off by kind of bending my card a bit so that it can slide off and now we've got our belly band that we're going to decorate. What I did for this one is I cut my wreath into pieces and you can or into, into little pieces and you can see that there's two different greens making up the stems on, on this, um, the wreath. So when we come in and cut, we wanna make sure that we've got 
those green pieces separated like here we can go in and while we don't necessarily have to that one looks okay on this one it looked would have looked weird had we had like a really dark green right on the tip so you almost have to separate it right where the flower is we need a bunny and if you have this strip which should be two inches if you have enough room you can punch it from this scrap if you don't have enough room, you can go grab another white scrap, but we've got our circle. And because it's a see-through stamp, we probably want to use that stamp and pierce mat. We'll bring that under our grid paper, ink up our bunny head, and stamp that. And that will go on the front of our wreath with dimensionals. So I'm going to first add the bunny and if you look in here you can see that the stems don't oh there we go tilt it just a little bit that way the stems don't necessarily even reach the middle portion of that circle so we're going to put the bunny on here with a couple dimensionals right through the middle make sure it's straight and centered and then we just use our multi-purpose liquid glue to kind of like add our add our pretties And you'll notice that I don't add a ton of glue on each of these pieces. I just add um, a little bit where I know it's going to connect to the paper. You can always come in and add more dimensionals here if you want to tack down things a little more securely. So we'll put one there. And then we'll lift up this side. And we'll make sure that all those stems are going down too. You could color the bunny if you'd like to, but sometimes a white bunny is pretty. So next, we just slide it back onto the card. And the trick for that is to bend the card a little bit. Keep it bent as you're sliding it down on. And there's our finished, our finished card. Oh, so pretty. Such a pretty baby card. It takes a little bit of work, but it's worth it. Ta-da. The next project I have for you, I'm going to walk you through. I'm not going to fully recreate the whole thing, but because actually, because you know a lot of these steps if you watched the other projects in my first video and this video. Um, but let me explain measurements to you, give you a couple tips on, a, on specific areas. And then this area up here, I'm actually going to walk you through by making a card that's similar to that. The card is actually something I created first. And then I said, oh my gosh, that's perfect for the like focal point title area for a scrapbook page. So what I have on here is these little guys, obviously cut into a square. And we have for that square, I believe it's four, yep, four by four, which means the white layer, which is basic white cardstock, is four and an eighth by four and an eighth. It's slightly smaller than the green that is here. So it's a slightly smaller square, but I just thought that that was okay because this is a focal point, so it can be a little bit tinier in that area because of all of this that's surrounding it. So this is four and an eighth by four and an eighth for the white, four by four for the card layer, and then it is popped up on dimensionals. You can see that we have this little area here, which kind of complements the title over here, and I'm going to show you how to do that. But you do know how to punch stamp and punch with the layering leaves solid leaf image, and we've done three leaves here. We've got a leaf here, a leaf cluster here, another one here, another one behind the bunny and chickadee, and then we've got three up here. So there's several. There's, oh gosh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine all together. You can also see that there's another stamp image that I did use on the page, and it's these little speckles. Be careful not to have the speckles down um, near the bunny's butt. <laughs> 
because <laughs> that would be funny. Okay, um, you could, but we've got little speckles up in through here, and it's basically just kind of like a spattering of, of um, soil or whatever. We've got some down here. And then, uh, I believe that's it for the stamp images from that set, but we did use the sentiment and, oh no, because the hugs comes from here. So the hugs is from the Sending Hugs stamp, and then we've got the Easter and the Springtime Greetings. How did I use the Easter and the hugs to make this little section down here, this Sending Hugs? So we will walk you through that right now. For that, you're gonna need a tiny little strip that is 7 8 inches high by, I think it was 2 and 3 8 Yes, 2 and 3 8 And we're going to mask off for our Easter. We're gonna mask off all but the E. And you can do this, do this with post-it tape or post-it notes. I'm using post-it tape. You can also use like washi tape or you can use um, like, you know, some kind of tape that is non-permanent. Maybe even like, um, I don't know, scotch tape or something. But we don't want it to stick too hard to the stamp. Now we grab our ink. We're using our early espresso ink. And you don't have to ink up the whole thing. But you can get it on the corner here and just ink up that E. So that's all we needed was the E, but this helped to prevent the ink from getting on the rest of the stamp. We're also going to do that same trick with our sending. And you know what, for this one I'll just use a post-it note and we'll use the remainder of these little guys to help mask off the word sending. And we'll ink up the word hugs. And now we can pull off all of this. We can make sure that we didn't get any ink up there. I don't think we did. No. Good. Okay. So then we start with the word hugs and we're going to put that off to the side like so. And Rachel didn't press down hard enough. <laughs> and then we're going to exhale onto our E and we're going to stamp that over here. And our E becomes an ampersand when we take the early espresso or a brown marker and we just kind of make a little dash up and a dash down. And if I would have pressed better on the S side here, it would look very similar to our and hugs over there. So that's how you can make sending springtime greetings and hugs for that page. Um, other things to note, we've got a strip of gingham going through here. This gingham is 5 8 inches wide, yes, and it comes from the envelope. So even though you're cutting into this card to get this piece here, 5 and a half inches twice is not going to reach. You could certainly use that, but I thought it was best to have only one overlapping area since we see it all. And I thought it was also okay to have a little bit of... Um, adhesive shininess on the two ends that come from the envelope flap when you cut the, your strips from there. You can get, oh gosh, I don't know, probably even more than four strips from this envelope. You're going to lay them on the, the paper so that they are um, in alignment with their gingham stripes. And the way that I did that is I took my envelope and I cut first right through the middle of one of the solid lines. Once I got that, then I lined it up again and I noticed that it was pretty close to that 5 eighths of an inch. And I went with that all the way through, praying everything would connect and look the same way, and it actually does. So when you get your two 5 eighths inch strips positioned over the top of each other, those dark outside edges are going to overlap and connect well. Of course, I want to trim off that white. But now we have a really long strip that will reach that 12 inches of your background paper. And yes, we're using the Neutrals cardstock for our page base. And I grabbed the crumb cake layer for that. The layers for the photos 
are Garden Green and Early Espresso, and I just use eight and a half by 11 card stock for that. These are cut to um, five and a half for the green by four and a quarter. And then for the brown, we have uh, five and three eighths by four and an eighth. That way, when you put your photograph, which tends to be about four inches, um, on here, you only have to trim off maybe like an eighth of an inch on a true digital and a little bit more on a regular type of photo. So that's what all of these, except for this photo base, measures. Um, these two layers, it's four and a quarter by four and a quarter for the garden green, four and an eighth by four and an eighth for the early espresso. When I added the little um, branches of uh, leaves, I made sure that I had room to pull this up. I tucked it underneath, stuck down just the base leaves so that these would kind of lift off. That way, in case I want to put this page in a shadow box on our wall in a frame, then we have some dimension to it while the leaves are kind of popping off freely. I did that also with the other leaves where I just glued down the base. Now, when it's put into a scrapbook and you have your um, clear uh, pockets that it tucks into, these will get pressed down flat, but it just still kind of gives that, that shadow um, to it beforehand or even a little bit so when it's in the pocket page because you've got dimensionals lifting that clear pocket up just a bit on these pieces and these pieces. Also your bunny and your chickadee are up on dimensionals and then these two flowers are also up on dimensionals. Nothing is touching um, the uh, photo mats. Okay, so all of my adhesive for my flowers and for the bunny and chickadee are only connected to the crumb cake base. And then the other measurement I need to give you is for this piece, which also measures 7 eighths of an inch tall, but this one is uh, 2 and 7 eighths inches long for the white. So the cardstock that's underneath both of these is an inch tall and an eighth of an inch longer. So this one is three inches long and this one is two and a half inches long. For laying all of this down onto your paper, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is add your strips which go right to the edges and to the edges up here. Um, trim off the ends and then I positioned everything about a quarter of an inch away from each other and on the base we have about three quarter inches from the bottom. So I started with the strips, then I added this piece a quarter of an inch away and three quarters of an inch from the bottom, this one the same way, and then I built outward from these pieces. And that's how it all, it all came together. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you a card made with these elements. Let's prepare our pieces. We're going to grab this garden green strip that is one and a quarter inches tall and we're aiming our leaves off to the right and we're just going to stamp four of them in a row. This piece is actually five, uh, eight, and a, eight and a half inches long too so you can get about four, four on there, maybe five if you really push it and then we'll punch and we need to punch out five all together. We're bringing in this piece from the kit, and then we've got a strip that's the same size that we had on our scrapbook page. So it's uh, 7 eighths inches tall by 2 and 7 eighths, which fits perfectly into this 1 by 3 inch rectangle. And we're going to stamp that in early espresso with the springtime's, springtime greetings sentiment. Because this piece is 2 and 5 eighths inches uh, wide in this direction, I cut a strip of basic white cardstock for the inside of the card that is two and five eighths by five and a half inches tall. And we're gonna lay that inside. And before we lay it inside, we'll have our ink ready. And we're gonna stamp a little bit of a speckle up here. And we're gonna stamp a little bit down through here. We also want to tuck in our leaves as we lay it down. So we have one that's going to be positioned this way. And it's about, oh gosh, a quarter of an inch from the bottom. And looks like that. 
and then the other one is coming up in this direction like that. And I think I have it positioned out a little bit further. And then you can put more adhesive on the back side to hold those down. And we're going to grab our multi-purpose liquid glue and just glue the base of those leaves a bit. Um, the ones that are closer to the base, right? So we're going to glue those bigger ones down there. Then we'll lay this in here about a quarter, in, quarter of an inch from the edge. So we still see those speckles. Perfect. And then on the front of the card, we'll add these pieces. So we're going to layer our sentiment strip onto our pecan pie, pecan, pecan pie um, cardstock strip. This will go up on dimensionals in all four corners. And before we lay that down on the front of our card, we're going to add some more speckles. So we'll add this up in here, same as we did on the inside of the card. This one down here. We'll lay that down about a quarter of an inch from the outside edge and centered, maybe up a little higher. Now we're going to add this piece, and it's going to come across so part of it's going to adhere to the panel that's up here, and the other part is going to connect to the base of the card. So we need two different adhesives on there. We're going to tuck it underneath the chickadees' feet, feetsies, feet, <laughs> their feet, like that. And that should bring this piece about a quarter of an inch from that side, and it needs to be straightened out. Hold on. Okay, now we add the leaves. And this leaf is going to be the tiniest one, so we're going to trim off a little bit because we don't need all of that on there. And we're going to add our multi-purpose liquid glue. I lost it. It's a messy table here. <laughs> we're adding that just to the base of the leaf, and we're going to tuck it under here like that. Press it down. We better hold it for a while because there's a dimensional under there so we kind of have to press it really hard to get it to stay. And then this piece is also going to get cut short and we'll add that under here like that also sticking out. So press those down make sure they stay connected but you'll notice that this leaf and this leaf are kind of overlapping this portion of the card so they're going to stick up a bit that's why you have to press and hold for a while to make sure that they're stuck they don't pull away that way and then we'll add this branch of leaves down under it all so it kind of sits like that and that is our finished card so pretty right springtime springtime greetings gorgeous card. Now that you've watched my video, I hope you can see that with just a few extra supplies and some imagination, you can go beyond and make so much more with these paper pumpkin kits. To access paper pumpkin kit ideas that I'll share in the future, be sure that you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and my website so that you don't miss out on videos and other special blog posts. In fact, click on my website link below for this set of projects so that you can access the visual supply list and view close-up photos of all that I've shared today. And if you'd like to have access to my exclusive paper pumpkin project ideas, click below to start your subscription with me as your demonstrator. Thank you for watching. It builds creativity to think outside the box. I hope that you enjoyed this video tutorial. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.